Apple recently announced their new iPhone lineup, and the devices are ruffling some feathers, but not for the reasons you might think. The issue many people have is with the device's names, which are iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. So why are people upset about this naming scheme? Well, they believe there's no reason to call the iPhone a Pro product, and that by doing so, Apple is watering down the word Pro since the iPhone is clearly a consumer-level product. But I take issue with this argument, and in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to help decide which video topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and these voting polls will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now, I want to begin by giving you a rundown of Apple's history with the word Pro, since that'll give you a better understanding of why some people are upset that Apple is associating it with the iPhone. So, the first time Apple actually used the Pro suffix in a product was with the MacBook Pro back in 2006, and that's because it was equipped with features that power users needed to get their work done quickly and efficiently. Features like a larger display, a more powerful processor, more ports, more storage, and more RAM. And what exactly were these users doing with their MacBook Pros? Well, many of them used their machines for work like video editing, photo editing, graphic design, or 3D rendering. So you can see why everyday users who just browsed the internet, checked email, or wrote papers had no need for the more expensive and more powerful Pro model MacBook. In fact, back in the late 2000s, it was uncommon to see people with MacBook Pros or Mac Pros unless they had a job where those powerful machines were necessary. And it's easy to understand why. The 2006 MacBook Pro started at $2,000, while the MacBook was almost half the price at $1,100. Compare that to the MacBook Pro today, which starts at $1,300. But that isn't really a fair comparison, because today's MacBook Pro is much different than the model in 2006. Its display is 13 inches instead of 15, and it features the same amount of storage and RAM as the MacBook Air. In fact, its only real Pro feature is its quad-core processor and faster graphics card. And yes, you get a cool touch bar, but you also get the same number of ports and the same quality display as the Air. That's exactly why you see more MacBook Pros being used today by what some may consider to be non-professionals like students. But curiously, there was no backlash when Apple introduced an underpowered 13-inch MacBook Pro that started at just $1,200 back in 2008. Even though it watered down the Pro name in almost exactly the same way as the iPhone Pro today. The first time Apple was widely criticized for this was with the iPad Pro in 2017. Not only did many people see it as an excuse to raise the device's price by $100, but they also felt like it was still a consumer-level product unworthy of the Pro name. But as I said in the beginning of the video, I don't agree with the premise that the Pro suffix is being watered down. In fact, I think it signifies just how capable devices like the iPad and iPhone have become. Back in 2007, the iPhone could hardly take a decent photo, but today it takes better photos than most dedicated cameras. Not to mention all the built-in photo editing tools with a marketplace of apps that push its photography capabilities even further. And that's why we're seeing iPhones being used in professional settings. Oscar-winning director Claude Lelouch shot parts of his latest film with an iPhone, saying Orson Welles would have loved shooting with an iPhone it will change the history of cinema. So does that officially make the iPhone a pro device? Or do more professionals have to use it in order to qualify? If so, how many? As you can see, there isn't such a clear division between the pro and casual user as some may think. After all, don't pro users become casual users after their workday is finished? And don't casual users sometimes need powerful tools to edit together a video of the family vacation or to create a professional looking photo book? I believe there's much more overlap between pro and casual than people care to admit. And as the line between these two categories begin to blur, so are Apple's products. Just consider the fact that today's mobile devices are more powerful than computers were 10 years ago. So when does a device stop being casual and start being professional? One minute I could be playing words with friends on my iPad, and the next minute I could be editing 4K video. 
When I was a kid, it was obvious that mobile devices like the iPod weren't made for professional use, and I think that's why we never saw an iPod Pro. But things are much different today. I think backlash over the iPhone 11 Pro name is coming from people unaware of how much technology has shifted over the last 10 to 15 years. But because Apple has officially made the iPhone a Pro device, it has caused some people to point out all the quote-unquote Pro features they think the iPhone is missing. Things like a USB-C port, a headphone jack, or Apple Pencil support. And this isn't all that different from when the iMac Pro was introduced. At that time, there were complaints about its lack of user upgradability, which earned Apple criticism for calling it a Pro machine. It's a response we see every time Apple uses Pro in a product's name. If it doesn't have a feature I need as a professional, then it isn't worthy of being called a professional-grade product. But of course, this depends on who you ask, since different people have different needs. And that brings us to one of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs, who said, Products are packages of emphasis. Some things are emphasized in a product and other things aren't. And that's been Apple's approach to products since the very beginning. Is my iPad considered a flawed product since it doesn't support Flash? I don't think so. But maybe that's a deal breaker for someone else. If so, that person should look for a tablet that supports Flash if that's what they need to get their work done. And I think that same attitude can be applied to the current pro naming situation with Apple's products. But it's also important to point out that there were marketing reasons behind the iPhone's new naming scheme. And it's easy to understand Apple's logic by looking to their other product lines. There's the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Then there's the iPad Mini, iPad, iPad Air, and iPad Pro. But when it came to the iPhone, there was the iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max. The first problem with those names is that the most popular iPhone, the XR, had a name that implied it was lesser than the other models. Just like the iPhone SE, the iPhone XR simply sounded like a budget phone, and I don't think Apple wanted their most popular iPhone to be marketed that way, even if that was technically the truth. So when it came to naming the new iPhones, Apple wanted to establish their most affordable model as the baseline, and make it clear that the two more expensive models were premium offerings. And they did this by simply naming the most affordable model iPhone 11, instead of iPhone 11R like many rumors predicted. But this created a problem. How would Apple differentiate the two premium models when the name iPhone 11 was already taken? Well, they had to add a suffix. And which one makes the most sense? Certainly not Air. That's used for models of products that are lower priced, like the MacBook Air and iPad Air. And if you're wondering why Apple didn't name the budget iPhone the iPhone 11 Air, that brings us to my initial point. Apple didn't want any iPhone model to have a budget-sounding name. Instead, they added the only suffix that implies a premium device, and that was Pro. So iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro. And in order to differentiate the larger 6.5-inch model, Apple carried over the max suffix from last year's iPhones, and that gave us the longest iPhone name in history at seven syllables, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I should also mention that Apple wasn't the first company to use the Pro suffix for their smartphones. Both Xiaomi and Huawei had models that included Pro before Apple did. So while I understand why some people are frustrated by Apple's liberal use of the word Pro, I think it's something that should be celebrated as a testament to how far the industry has come. The fact that professionals like doctors and filmmakers are using the same device to get work done as they are to unwind after a long day is quite impressive. The iPad and iPhone are capable of being used as Pro machines while also being used as gaming or Netflix machines, and I think that boundary between a Pro and casual device will only become more blurred in the future. And while we're on the subject of professionals, Squarespace is a must-have for any Pro looking to build their own website. Squarespace allows you to build the best, most beautiful website you can, all without spending tons of money on development, designing, and hosting, and without worrying about patching or installations or any of that complicated stuff. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform with a super easy-to-use drag-and-drop interface that offers hundreds of customizable templates, 
And if you get stuck or don't know what to do next, Squarespace has helpful video tutorials on their YouTube channel and a 24-7 customer support team. Not to mention the powerful SEO, analytics, and marketing features built right into the service. And if you're thinking about running an e-commerce store, Squarespace allows you to create products to display for sale on your website, offers inventory management tools, and automatically generates shipping labels for you to print off. I actually use Squarespace for my own website after trying quite a few different services and I highly recommend them. So head over to squarespace.com slash Apple Explained and get 10% off your first purchase. You can find that link in the description. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.